This is my continuing coverage of the health care law. We are on the bottom of page number 80. And we are on the part where it says, Report by HHS and insolvency warnings. In general, on an annual basis, the Secretary shall conduct a study of the solvency of a community health insurance option and submit to Congress a report describing the results of such study. In other words, every year... The Secretary of Health and Human Services is going to assess the financial records of the community health insurance option. Result. If in any year the result of the study under paragraph 1 is that a community health insurance option is insolvent, in other words, they can't pay their bills, such results shall be treated as a community health insurance option insolvency warning. So in other words, they're going to be warned not to remain insolvent. Submission of plan and procedure. In general, if there is a community health insurance option solvency warning under paragraph 2 made in, the, in a year, the President shall submit to Congress within the 15-day period beginning on the date of the budget submission to Congress under sub section 1105A of Title 31, United States Code, for the succeeding year proposed legislation to respond to such warning. In other words, what, we, what are we going to do to these people if they continue to be insolvent? Procedure. In the case of a legislative proposal submitted by the President pursuant to subparagraph A, such proposals shall be considered by Congress using the same procedure described under sections 803 and 804 of the Medicare Prescription Drug Improvement and Modernization Act of 2003 that shall be used for a Medicare funding warning. In other words, we're going to tell you flat out, you keep this up, there'll be penalties. Marketing parity in, in a facility controlled by the federal government or by a state where marketing or promotional materials related to a community health insurance option are made available to the public, making available marketing or promotional materials relating to private health insurance plans shall not be prohibited. Such materials include informational pamphlets, guidebooks, enrollment forms, and other materials determined re reasonable for display. So, if competing private insurance companies want to display their pamphlets alongside this community health option, they can. Whew. Authorization of Appropriations. There is authorized to be appropriated such sums as may be necessary to carry out this section. Level playing field. In general, notwithstanding any other provision of law, any health insurance covered offered by a private health insurance issuer should not be subject to any federal or state law described in subsection B if a qualified health plan offered under the Consumer Operated and Oriented Plan Program under Section 1322, a Community Health Insurance Option under Section 1323, or a Nationwide Qualified Health Plan under Section 1333B is not subject to such law. Laws described. The federal and state laws described in this subsection are the federal and state laws re re relating to guaranteed renewal, rating, pre-existing conditions, non-discrimination, quality improvement and reporting, fraud and abuse, solvency and financial requirements, market conduct, prompt payment, appeals and grievances, privacy and confidentiality, licensure, and benefit plan material or information. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. But anyway, now we are getting into something called Part 4. We have made it through three parts already. Yeehaw! Okay, yeah. We'll celebrate later as we go into Part 4. Anyway, I will stop the video right here. I will tell you more in my next video, so stay tuned.